So, logs quiz number two. It says, use the log laws. Now, I said to you, the curveball is number four. So, I'm curious. We'll see. Use the log laws to express each as a single logarithm and then evaluate. I can't do the log base 4 of 32. It doesn't work out evenly. I can do the log base 4 of 2. It's a half because 2 is the square root of 4, which is 4 to the 1 half. And I can, You know what, though? They're the same base. I can combine them. This is going to be the log base 4 of 32 times 2. Hey, that's the log base 4 of 64, and Mr. Duick graciously made me memorize certain exponents. I know that's a 3, one mark. What base am I in question 2? If there's no base, what base are we? Yeah, we call it the common base. Get lazy. That's, that's the one we're going to use generically. So this is going to be the log of 4 times 5 divided by 2 which I'm pretty sure is the log of 10. What is the log base 10 of 10? What is the log base 5 of 5? What's the log base a million of a million? What's the log base gamma of gamma? It's got to be 1, whatever that gamma is, unless gamma is a 0, which we said was not allowed as a base. <sighs> oh, this is the log base 3 of 9. We said cube root was the same as a one-third exponent. And Amanda, the reason that's nice is I can now move that one-third to the front. This is one-third times the log base 3 of 9. And I know that the log base 3 of 9 is a 2. And I know that that's a fraction. It's really 2 over what? 1. I'm not going to write that. And I know that to multiply fractions, that's the easiest one. It's top times top, bottom times bottom. I'm pretty sure the answer is two-thirds. There's about three other ways you can get to that same answer. That's how I would probably do it, though. Question? No? Oh, you're looking kind of like, maybe it's just waking up. Gotcha. Number five. Wait a minute, Mr. Duke. What about number four? Yeah, I'm going to do it last. Number five says evaluate. Okay. This is the log base four of... This is the log base 4 of 2. There's a 6 on top. There's a 64 on the top. There's already a 3 on the bottom. And there's going to be an 8 on the bottom as well. And that's how I handle fractions, by the way. Uh, by the way, I'm going to assume this is going to work out to a 4 or a 16 or a 64, because otherwise, why would they give me a log base 4? If I get an answer of 17, I've messed up somewhere. Uh, let's see. If this was on the non-calc section, I would go 6 and 3. 3 goes into 6 twice, and 8 goes into 64 8 times. Really, I have a 2 and an 8. In ah! Good gosh. This is the log base 4 of 16. Two. Andrew says, I'm telling you, every answer works out to two, Mr. No, just those will show up fairly often because there's only so many exponents and powers that I've asked you to memorize. Uh, example six. The log base five of root 175 over root seven. Hey, we did one kind of like this. Someone asked me about this in the homework, and I said something like this. What's 175 divided by 7? I think 25. How did I guess 25? Because my base is 5. I'm not guessing 15. I'm not guessing 20. I'm not guessing 30. Those, I'm not guessing 22. Those would be dumb guesses. I'm pretty sure it's 25. So if 175 divided by 7 is 25, what's root 175 divided by root 7? Root 25, right? You, uh, you went to the next step, but... I'll write this. This is the log base 5 of root 25. And Amanda, what is root 25? I could make this an exponent one half, move it to the front. But you know what? The order that I do things in, I do whatever is the most convenient. Sometimes I'll do the root first. 
Uh, sometimes I'll make, well here, because like the cube root of 9 didn't work out evenly, then I'll make it an exponent and move it to the front. This is the log base 5 of 5, which is 1. Now, before I do number 4, can you all do me a favor? See where it says out of 6 at the top? Make it out of 5, because number 4 is going to be a bonus question, but I didn't want to tell you that. I wanted you to deal with something that you thought was for marks and didn't know how to do, because that may happen on the test. What are you going to do? I wanted to get used to that feeling of, oh, no, I can do this. Now, let's see. It says this. Log base 3 of 4 is equal to x. Express log base 3 of 2 in terms of x. I think what I want to do is try and somehow write this as a log base 3 of 4. What's my base here, Andrew? What's my base here? So I'm not pulling out the base change law. I would if it was like a 9 or a 27 or a 1 third. Or I, I'd try base change and I'd hope to spot something. What's inside my log? What's inside my log? Not a 2. I see a 4 in disguise. I think I can write this itself as Is that not still technically the log base 3 of 2? Now, why is that nice? What can I do with that exponent? And I'll get 1 half the log base, oh, not base 4, Mr. Duick. The log base 3 of 4. Why is that so nice? What is the log base 3 of 4 the same as? When I see a log base 3 of 4, what can I replace it with? When I see a log base 3 of 4, what can I replace it with? When I see a log base 3 of 4, what can I replace it with? I can replace it with an x. That's what it says. Is a 1 half in front? and an x. And you know what I've just done? I have written this in terms of x. A half. You know what the log base 3 of 2 is? It's a half x. If the log base 3 of 4 is x, then log base 2 of 3 base 3 of 2 is a half x. And this is your final answer. Now, first of all, just out of curiosity, who got that? Anybody? Didn't think so. Now these are fair game. If they give you an if-then question, now the word then doesn't appear here, but it's if, blah, 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 then express. Start with the then, and what you're going to try and do is turn it into the if using log rules, and then keep track of whatever extra stuff you needed to bring in to turn it into the if, and uh, move that to the front if you can, or do something with it, and you should be able to get an algebraic expression. We're going to spend a whole day on if-then questions, but... That's your first one. So if you'd be so kind as to give yourself a score, not out of six, but out of five, that would be delightful and do wonderful. And then pass them in. Can you turn to the back of your book where there is a blank page, please? Can you turn to the back of the book where there is a blank page, please? And for a little heading, you can just write practice exponential equation. Practice exponential equations. So here's what we looked at yesterday. Okay. I'm going to do this, and then I'll take questions about the homework. But I have a feeling by doing a couple of more examples, I might answer some of the questions in the homework. Don't write this first one down. Don't write this first one down. If I give you something like whoop, this, don't write this down. Uh, 5 to the 3x minus 2 equals 25 to the 6 minus x. This one we can solve without logs. How? 
what would we do to solve this one without logs? Really? We wrote a quiz on it, quiz one. Okay, we would write this as, I'd say, that's not a 25, that's a 5 squared. I would tidy it up, then I would say, do I have one base equals one base? I would answer yes. Are my bases the same? I would answer yes, and then I would equate the exponents. Write this one down. Law, uh, 5 to the 3x minus 2 equals 15 to the 6 take away x. What type of an equation is this? It's an exponential. You know why? Because the variable is sitting in an exponent. How do I solve this? We added one new rule to your list of equation solving rules. We said there's something else that you can do to both sides of the equation. You only do it when you have the variable as an exponent. What do you do to both sides of the equation? Take the log of both sides. And I yelled at you guys last class. I said, don't you dare take shortcuts. Way too much room to make dumb mistakes. So I'm going to be very meticulous. Mr. Duick, could I move the exponents down right away? I, you know what? You're asking for trouble and dumb mistakes. Because I always have a kid that does that, and they almost always do it wrong. And then I can't give them marks for taking the log properly because they tried doing two steps at once. And since they got the step wrong, I can't give them any marks for the line, and they threw away a half mark. Now I'm going to move the exponents down to the front. Ah, but when I move these exponents down to the front, what am I absolutely, positively going to remember? Brackets. So I always make a little note like that with a little squiggly line to remind myself that they went down there. You don't have to, but it helps me. And it's going to be 3x minus 2 log 5 equals, and in brackets, 6 minus x log 15. Why is that so nice? What do I do now? Now... Who has solution manuals? Okay, in the solution manual, what I've noticed the author does is he actually evaluates the log of 5 right now as a number, as a decimal, and he carries it to about 8 decimal places, and he carries that to about 8 decimal places. He gets rid of the logs, which is legitimate. You can solve it that way, but you can't get an exact value that way. You can, it'll take you right to the decimal value, and so I'm sure the method I'm showing you gets you an exact value. If it's multiple choice and you're having to just pick from an answer on a non-calculator section, this is what the answer would look like. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to get rid of brackets. And that's going to give me 3x log 5 minus 2 log 5 equals 6 log 15 minus x log 15. Double check. Yes, 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 yes. How many x terms do I have? Two. Are they on the same side? Well, let's deal with that. I think the easiest Amanda would be plus this to that side, and at the same time, I'm going to plus this 2 log 5 over to that side. I'm going to get all my x terms to one side and all my non-x terms to the other side. And I usually try and do it in such a way where I can get rid of as many negatives as possible, because negatives are when I make dumb mistakes. Is that right? By the way, look up for a second, Sabrina. You want to know the biggest, most common sloppy mistake at this point? People are so paranoid about the logs, they let their guard down for the math eight. The number of times I see that. They, they, they plus this one over, they did that first. I'm like, yes, I got it right, and I'll just drop that there. And they forget to actually plus or minus it over. And then, of course, everything after that, unfortunately, is bleh. 
How many X terms do I have, Holly? How many would I prefer? One. It would be wonderful if there was some kind of a grade 9 mathematical operation that I could pull out of my back pocket somehow that would somehow help me turn this from two terms into one term. What? I can factor an X out. And I'll get 3 log 5 plus log 15 equals 6 log 15 plus 2 log 5. I'm home free, except for some reason I see a lot of kids freeze here because it looks ugly. What's my final step? How would I get the x by itself? Well, first of all, Shannon, what do I want to get rid of on this side? I think this big, great big bracket, yes? What's happening between the x and the bracket? So how do I move it over? Yeah, it's ugly, fine, but it's still math 8, I would argue. x equals 6 log 15 plus 2 log 5 all over 3 log 5 plus log 15. Now, we're going to go to our calculator in just a second, but I just want to show you different ways that this could be written. Could they move the 6 up there as an exponent and the 2 up there as an exponent and the 3 up there as an exponent? Yeah. Or even could they, hey, what's adding two logs the same as? What's adding two logs the same as? They could write this all as one single log of 15 to the 6 times 5 squared, whatever the heck that is. They could write this, what's adding two logs the same as? Multiplying. They could write this as one great big log of 5 to the 3rd times 50, whatever the heck that is. I would never bother. I figure, I like this better. And I'm pretty sure on my tests I never do do that. And I guess since there's no provincial exam this year, I don't have to worry about you guys running across that. Let's go to our calculators. How many terms on top? Brackets. How many terms on the bottom? Two. Brackets. I'm deliberately going to freeze the screen. Try this on your calculator. I said it's amazing how many kids can get to here and can't get the right answer. And then on a five mark question, you just threw away one mark out of five. And it was because you don't know how to type. Not because you can't do the math. That's silly. No, you know what? It was because you were too lazy to practice during class. That's silly. Two point five eight three zero nine nine three eight two blah 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 blah. Okay. Brackets around the top, Ryan, brackets around the bottom, and every time you type a log, you have to close off a bracket for the log. Clip. There. I'll even put what I did on my calculator. I would consider that a B-level question. It's a question. What do I mean by a B-level log question? Two different exponents, and they're both binomials. Both two terms. What's an A-level question, you ask? Well, let's try one. Put an equal sign. Show you how I would make one up. Katie, give me a number between 1 and 10. 5? We just did 5 in the previous one, actually. Give me a different one. 7 to the power of uh, 4 minus 2x. I don't know. Just making up an exponent. Give me another number between 1 and 20 this time. 11 to the 3x plus 1. Now that's the same as we just did. Two different bases, two different exponents, binomials. If I wanted to make this tougher, in front of the 7, I would put a coefficient, like 6. Oh, and in front of the 11, 
I would put another coefficient, like three. Actually, I just gamed you. I just fibbed to you guys just a little bit. Okay? See that three on the right-hand side? See it? What's it doing to the bracket? Multiplying, which means I can move it around. I can move it to the other side if I want to. How could I move it to the other side? Divide. If they gave me, if I was dumb enough to give you this, first thing that I would do is I would say, no, nah, Duick, you're not going to get me. It's not two coefficients. Really, Mr. Duick, really, Mr. Duick, the question you're having is, what is 6 divided by 3? And I'm allowed to divide because there's no exponent on the 6. I'm not breaking my bed math rules. Really, the question I would give you is this. 2 bracket 7, 4 minus 2x equals 11, 3x plus 1. If you ever have, Cassandra, two coefficients, you don't. Move one of them over to the other side. Just deal with one coefficient. But this I would consider an A-level question. I am going to put one of these on your written section. Two different bases, two binomial exponents, and a coefficient. What kind of an equation is this, Carson? Exponential. How do you know without having to think too hard anymore? Variables and exponent. Now, if you can't remember the name of it, that's fine. But make sure you clue in variables and exponent. My strategy is not going to be make it equal to zero. My strategy is not going to be try and factor. My strategy, the first thing I'm going to try and do is do what? What's the first step? Really, if you're not sure, can you look at the previous example? What's the first thing we do on the first line? Log both sides. What was, what the, do you remember what I said was the most devastating, the most common mistake here on the left-hand side? People move the exponent to the front now. And if you move the exponent to the front now, what you're really saying is that exponent isn't just on the 7, it's also on the 2. We can't move it to the front now. What did we have to do? We had to take this log, which has two terms in it, and break it up. What's happening between the two and the bracket? By the way, I should probably technically write this like that so that you know all of those are inside the log. Otherwise, you might think it was log two times seven to the blah, blah, where the seven wasn't inside the log. So I should probably do that just to avoid making a sloppy mistake later on. What did you say is happening between the two and the bracket? So if I break this up, what will it be? I can't tell whether you guys are quiet and don't like volunteering answers or are just completely lost. If you're completely lost, that's okay. If you don't like volunteering answers, get over it, please. What would I do here, Steph? I'll start calling names now. What did you say? It's multiplying. What's multiplying inside a log the same as? Where? Outside the log. So I'm going to go like this. Log 2 plus log 7 to the 4 minus 2x equals log of 11 to the 3x plus 1. Now, Kirsten, I can move the exponents to the front. Now, I can move the exponents to the... Oh, brackets, 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 brackets. Now what? I would argue that now we've turned it into the previous question, a little uglier version, but I would go find the line with brackets on the previous question, and I'd say to myself, self, what did we do? Oh, 
And again, I said to those of you that have the solution manuals, in the solution manuals, the author makes this a decimal, makes this a decimal, and multiplies the decimal into the brackets, which is perfectly fine and legal if I ask you to solve it without an exact value. I would just carry about eight decimals to make sure I don't get a rounding off error because logs are, yeah. But I would argue this is actually in some ways easier. Uh, I'll get this. The log 2 is going to drop down like a domino. I'll get a 4 log 7. I'll get a minus 2x log 7 equals. I'll get a 3x log 11. And I'll get a 1 log 11. Am I going to write the 1 in front of the log? No. no. Holly, now what? You get the x's to the same side and get the other stuff to the other side. I think the easiest is going to be move this guy to there by plussing it and move this guy to there. How? By minusing it. Again, it's amazing how many kids make sloppy mistakes on this line because they're so relieved that they've done the nasty stuff. Now it's like math. They move them around and they let their guard down. Don't do that. I'll freak on you in love, but I'll freak on you in a nice loving teacher kind of a way. I'll get this, log 2 plus 4 log 7 minus log 11 equals 3x log 11 plus 2 log 7. Oh, wait, Mr. Duick, 2x. <gasps> that would have been sloppy. would have been devastating. would have been bad. Now what? Okay, it would be wonderful or some kind of good mathematical operation. I can pull in my back. By the way, I use these phrases to try and help jog your memory and give you a bit easier way to remember. Just like how do I find an inverse? Which x and y around? Uh, who's in physics? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but y you know the punchline. But I'm really trying to teach you to you know give you a, a little memory trick, right? I have oh uh, alarm bell. Hey, that was a fun one last unit too, wasn't it? Hey, it worked. <laughs> Cause me trauma, says Carson. Well, it still worked. So I'm going to factor out an x, and I'll have 3 log 11 plus 2 log 7. Final step to get the x by itself is what? Divide. x is going to be log 2 plus 4 log 7 minus log 11 on top, all divided by 3 log 11 plus 2 log 7 on the bottom. Did I miss anything? I'm going to double check to make sure I haven't made a typo. Nope. Okay. Evaluate it. That's the exact value. Give me the answer to, oh heck, three decimal places. Unless by an amazing fluke this works out evenly, but I'd be stunned if it did. I don't know. I'm just letting people try. 0.548, is that what you said? Anybody else? 0.548? 0.548? Yeah? Steph got it? Woohoo! Oh, Steph, how could you cheat? You guys remember? I also taught you last day how you don't hand this test in early. You go back to these two questions and you graph left side, graph right side, and find where they cross. Graph left side, graph right side, and find where they cross. And if you get the same decimal, you smile and you say, excellent. I just know I'm getting 100% on one section of the test. That's a nice feeling. Uh, there's going to be one, maybe two of these on your test. They're worth four to five marks a piece. So if there's two of these, that's 10 marks out of 50. That's 20% on your test. Yes, that, like, like, that's a nice feeling. Okay. Any questions there at all? Now, there may have been questions about the homework. I'm going to deliberately say I'm hoping I answered some of them right now. I will take questions when I see you in a week. But we need to finish off the lesson from last day. So if you can be so kind as to go back to your workbooks and turn to page, turn to page 130, 136.
Page 136. By the way, if you try on the graphing thing, try it later. But it works, trust me. Page 136. Oh, you might want to make the page that we just did. That might be one you want to dog ear. So, hey, that's part of your study notes. Mr. Duke has just told you two questions. Uh, you'll have those same two questions on your test with different numbers and different coefficients in front of the x's. But it'll look really similar to that. Okay. Page 136. Carson, if we call an equation where the x is an exponent an exponential equation, what do you think we call an equation where the x is inside a logarithm? A logarithmic equation. So part two, solving logarithmic equations. Okay? Right? There are many text techniques for solving logarithmic equations. I want you to look at example two. There are two main types of logarithmic equations. Now, what makes an equation a logarithmic equation? Where is the x sitting? Inside a log. Okay? There are two main types. Where there's logs in everything, or where you have logs on one side and no logs on the other side. We're going to start out with the same approach and then come to a fork in the road and use two different solutions at the end. Okay. Can you see the difference though? Logs and everything, uh, no logs on the right. Right? The approach is the same for both of them at the beginning. I want to rewrite this as one thing equals one thing. Here I have two terms. I want to write this as one term equals one term. Oh, are my bases the same? What's subtracting two logs the same as? I can rewrite this as... Have I written that as one thing equals uh, one term equals one term? Good. I'm going to do the same, same thing over here on the right. Oh, are my bases the same? I'm adding. What's adding two logs the same as? This can be written as the log base 5. I'll use a square bracket and then curly bracket x plus 1, curly bracket x minus 3 equals 1. Do I also have one term equals one term? But can you see the difference? On the left-hand side, I have one log equals one log. On the right-hand side, I have one log equals a number. Let's look at the left-hand side. I have one log equals one log. The logs cancel. Well, OK, I should be careful. Technically, what we're doing is we're taking the anti-log of both sides and recognizing that the quantity of the first log has to be the same as the quantity that the logs cancel. If you have one log equals one log, same base, you can say my real equation is x over 15 equals 0.2. Now, I'm doing bad math right there because a math professor, when I say the logs cancel, would freak on me because I'm, it's like I'm dividing both sides by log when I say they cancel. No. What I'm really saying, Andrew, is look, if you have the log of something equals the log of something, the two somethings have to be the same. We're taking the anti-log on both sides if you really want to think about it. But I'm going to say the logs cancel because that's easier for you to remember. Oh, how would I solve this? What's the 15 doing to the x? Dividing, so how will I move it over? x is 0.2 times 15. x is uh, 3. 3. Uh, look at the right. Can I cancel the logs? Do I have a log on the right-hand side? Do I have a log on the right-hand side? Can I cancel the logs here? No. Now what? So here's the second strategy. This is the two types of equations. If you have one log equals one log, the logs cancel. No, you're not taking the analog both sides. Fine. I'm going to write this as an exponent. What to the power of what equals what? Use your log definition, because if you know one, you know the other. 
write that as an exponent. What number to the power of what number equals what? I'll give you a hint. Your base is your base is your base is your base is your base. Five. Oh, let's use blue, Mr. Do it can be consistent. Five to the power of. <coughs> now I gotta be honest, if you don't know the log definition, you're flunking the test. If you, you need to go back and really review your notes. The log definition said this. Look up. <coughs> if a to the b equals c, I automatically know that the log base b. Uh, sorry, base B, Mr. Duick. You don't know the log. Base A, nice try, of C equals B. That to that equals what's inside the log. That to that equals what's inside the log. 5 to the power of 1 equals what's inside the log. Now, why is that so nice? What's happened to my logs now? Gone. In fact, what kind of an equation is this going to be? It's going to be a quadratic. You know how I know? Because when I multiply out the brackets, there's going to be an x squared. I can do that much in my head. Let's do that. What's 5 to the 1? Come on, people. What's 5 to the 1? 5 equals, and I get x squared minus 2x minus 3, I think, if I FOIL that out. What kind of an equation is this? It's quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. How do I solve a quadratic? What's the first thing I had to do before I did anything else? Make it equal to 0. I'll minus 5 from both sides. Now what? Factor or quadratic formula, but I'm going to try and factor. Are there numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 2? Are there numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 2? Yeah. Ah, so this factors into x minus 4, x plus 2 equals 0. What are my roots? Positive 4 and? Now, actually, for both of these questions, we're not quite done. There is one more thing you need to do. You need to check for what are called extraneous roots. You see, there are some numbers I can't take the log of. What can't I take the log of? Negatives or zeros. So double check. If I put this 3 right there, will that give me a negative inside the log? So I'm OK with that. I'm going to put a little check mark saying that I checked it off. Let's check this one here. If I put a 4 inside here, what's 4 plus 1? That works OK. What's 4 minus 3? That works OK. If I put a negative 2 right there, What's negative 2 plus 1? Can I take the log of a negative number? This one here, we reject. Much like when Ryan asked someone on a date. Reject. It's always a basketball player, Ryan. Sorry, always a basketball player every year. And this is how you're going to remember it. You're going to hear me say Ryan's date for the rest of the year, and you'll know rejection. You can say, much like when someone comes at you for a layup, you reject. You can use that one if you want. Whatever works for you, but i got to get something. Okay, This is an extraneous root. It pops out of our modified equation, but it does not work in the original equation. And I guarantee you, on your test, I'm going to give you some log equations with extraneous roots. It means you just got to quickly go back and check. Plug what you've got into the log expression, and if you get a negative inside the log, or a zero, no, no. He's part of a proud tradition. It's been basketball players for about 10 years. Come on, bear with me. Example three. It says solve and verify. Well, I'm just going to check for extraneous. I'm not going to do a complete verify. <sighs> okay. 
log x squared minus log x cubed equals 10. First thing I want to do is write this as one term equals one term. Oh, what's minusing the same as? So this is really the log of x squared over x cubed equals 10. Do I have log equals one log? Do the logs cancel? Nope. Oh, I'll have to write this as an exponent then. What's my base here? What to the power of what equals what? This to that equals what's inside the log. 10 to the 10th equals, by the way, what is x squared over x cubed? How many x's on top? Two. How many x's on the bottom? Three. How many x's left and where? One on the bottom. Now, it's amazing how often kids freeze up now that there's an x in the denominator. And I'm going to tell you right now on your test, there's going to be one question where you get an x in the bottom. Math 8. No, yeah, it's math 8. How can I solve this, boys and girls? Andrew, this is cross multiply because I have one fraction equals one fraction. Do I really need to put the over one? Come on! Ugh, I want to wash my hands just by writing that out. Blah. See the over one there. Anytime there's a number, recognize there is a fraction over one. This is one fraction equals one fraction. I can cross multiply. I'll get 10 to the 10th times x equals 1. How would I get the x by itself? How would I get the x by itself? Divide by 10 to the 10th. And I could write out the 10 with the 1 with 10 zero, but 10 to the 10th is big. I'll just x is 1 over 10 to the 10th, which is uh, probably scientific notation. 1 divided by 10 to the 10th power. Yeah, it gives me an answer 1 times 10 to the negative 10, which is really what it is. 1 times 10 to the negative 10. Actually, I don't like this question because the numbers are so big. I would have preferred a base of 2 there and a base of 2 there and maybe a 4 there or something like that, something smaller, but whatever. Two types of logarithmic equations. Logs in everything. Write it as 1 log equals 1 log. Logs cancel. Logs in some stuff, not logs in some stuff. Get your logs to one side, get your non-logs to the other side, and write it as one term equals one term. Write it as an exponent. Turn the page. Oh, by the way, I'm skipping B. Example four. Um, what's your hint that example four might not work out evenly? Two decimal places, okay? I said our strategy is, first of all, is there logs in everything here? Does every single term have a log in it? Nope, I got that three. Let's get the logs on one side and the non-logs on the other side. The first thing I would do is plus the three over. This is going to be two log base 3 of x minus log base 3 of x plus 3 equals 3. Now I want to write this as one term equals one term. Oh, wait a minute. These bases are the same, but I can't combine these logs yet because of this coefficient. But what can I do with that 2 to get it out of the way temporarily? Move it up as an exponent, right? I'll get log base 3 of x squared minus log base 3 of x plus 3 equals 3. I bet you I'm going to get a quadratic here because I'm seeing a squared popping out of here in the long run. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it'll cancel, but we'll see. Now let's write this as one log equals, or one thing, one term equals one term. Shannon, what's... Mo <laughs> Almost give the punchline. What's subtracting two logs the same as with authority, like you know what you're dividing? I can write this as the log base 3 of 
there's going to be an x squared on top, there's going to be an x minus 3 on the bottom, and a 3 over here. Do I have one log equals one log? No? X plus 3, thank you. Sorry. So how do I get rid of the logs here? I write this as an exponent. What number to the power of what number equals what? This to the power of that equals what's inside the log. 3 to the third equals x squared over x plus 3. By the way, what is 3 to the third? Don't say 9. What is 3 to the third? 27. Now what? Math 8. Is this not 1 fraction equals 1 fraction? Cross multiply. I'm going to write this as 27 times x plus 3 equals x squared times 1. What kind of an equation is this? It's quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. What am I going to do? I think get rid of brackets, make it equal to 0, and then I'm going to try factoring, but since it said to two decimal places, I'll bet you it's going to be quadratic formula. I bet you. Maybe not. Maybe they're just trying to throw me off. 27x plus 81 equals x squared. x squared minus 27x minus 81 equals 0. Are there numbers that multiply to 81 and add to negative 27? Or multiply to negative 81 and add to negative 27? Uh, I'm getting nothing. 9 and 9, no. 3 and 27, no. 181, no. I think that's it. So how can I solve that? How can I find those roots? Quadratic equation. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Remember that bad boy? Now, pause. Everyone get your graphing calculators out because there is a chance that your graphing calculator has a built-in quadratic solver. So get your graphing calculator out. And what you want to do right now is press the apps button, which is right below the X button, it's blue on the TI-83s. I think it's gray or brown or beige on the... Press your apps button right now. And you want to see if you have an app called Polysmolt. P-O-L-Y-S-M-L-T. Or you might have Polysmolt 2. Who has that? Can you all check? Because many of the school ones will have it too. Press the apps button, Sabrina. And do you have something called P O L Y S? What do you have? Yeah. Is that your calculator or my calculator? Oh, okay, that's why. Those of you that don't have it, in the next few days, when I say get to work, bring me your calculator and I'll install it. I'm okay with you using technology. Those of you that do have it, run it. Press the number next to it or whatever. Okay, and then what does it say on your screen? I think it says press any key, so press any key. Yes, and then I think you have several options, and the first one is polynomial root finder. Option number what? Let's press a one. And then, now if you're using Polysmolt version one, it says degree question mark. What's the degree of a quadratic? Two. Now, if you're using Polysmilk version 2, I think it has the numbers from 0 to 9, and you can just use your arrow keys to
to pick the degree, and there's a bunch of other stuff on the screen. Regardless, highlight the two. Yes? And then I think along the bottom, is there commands along the very bottom row of your screen now? I'm going from, I, by the way, I can't install it on here, so I'm having to go from memory. No? Sorry? Okay, uh, hit, uh, hit two and hit enter, equals. Do that. Does that take you to a new screen? Okay. That's the quadratic formula. See, look what they wrote up there, except instead of using A, B, and C, I think they're using A2, A1, and A0. But it's still A, B, and C. Okay, so what's A? One, enter. What's, look at the, they gave you a template there. You don't have to ask me. They gave you a quadratic template there, yes? Yes, top of your screen right there. They actually wrote it out for you to say, here's where the numbers go. So what is it on your program? I don't remember. Is it A2 or A0? A2, what's A1? Negative 27. What's A? Negative 81. And then how would I solve? I think solve is the bottom right, and it lines up with your graph button, doesn't it? That's the navigation keys that they're using. There's your roots. Who does not have the quadratic solver? OK. You guys, for now, see this line right here? See this line right here? Graph left side. Graph right side. And you know what I'm looking for? Where those two graphs do what? Cross. I'll go zoom standard just to make sure I'm in a good window. Got a bit of a problem. It crosses there. I think it probably crosses way up here too, but let's try it. Second function, calculate, intersection, first curve, second curve. I'll move a guess close to here. Enter. Is one of the roots on the poly smolt negative 2.724? Yes? Uh, two decimal places. And I'm going to go, so are you all with me on the intersection method, right? Those of you that don't have the poly smolt right now. Second function, calculate, intersection, first curve, enter, second curve, enter. Now, I want to see if there's a root over here off my screen, way up in the air. You know what? For my guess, I'm going to type in positive 9, because that's right there, and I'm hoping it'll sneak this way and find it. See how clever we can be? Let's see. Oh! It only found that one. Is there only one root? There is a second root. What's the second root? Sorry? 29.7. So right now, I haven't found it yet. I'm going to have to go window, and I'm going to have to make my x max maybe 50 to see if this fits on my screen. Let's see. And I might need to make my y max 100 to see if I can get. Well, it crosses there. It's crossing up there somewhere, I'm pretty sure. I might have to make my y max 300. I don't know. It's crossing up there somewhere. I'm going to see if it'll find it now. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Guess. I'm going to go. Well, I think I typed 50 as my x max. I'm going to guess 49. I'm going to have it start right here and see. Oh, there it found the 29.7. You can get there, but I'll be honest. I find the poly smolt easier. 29.72. Oh, wow, 
Why doesn't Ryan get a date? Look, 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 look. If I put a negative right there, what's... Oh, that's going to give me a negative log right there. Can't take the log of a negative. One more and we're done. By the way, I, I, I took a long time on this lesson because I really wanted to make sure you grasped it. You're going to have homework over the four-day week, but I don't see you for a whole week. You can spread it out and not have homework on your weekend. I just... Last one. Okay. Um, oh, is this a logarithmic equation? Yeah, you know how I know? Because the x is inside the log. So I'm going to try and write this as one term equals one term. Are my bases the same? What's subtracting the same as? I can write this as the log base 4 of x plus 1 over 2x minus 3 equals the log base 4 of 8. Do I have one term equals one term? Check. Oh, do I have one log equals one log? Then the logs cancel. No, I'm taking the analog of both sides. Well, they cancel. I can go... Thunk, thunk. My equation is really going to be x plus 1 over 2x minus, Mr. Duick, minus 3 equals 8. And again, it's amazing how many kids get here and they freeze. This is math 8. Is this not one fraction equals one fraction? It's an ugly fraction. It's not eights over one. Cross multiply. You're going to get x plus one times one, which is just plain old x plus one, and you're going to get eight times two x minus three. You're going to get x plus one equals sixteen x minus twenty four. You're going to get a 15x, and you're going to get a 25 over here. When you minus x from both sides and plus 24 to both sides, you're going to get x equals 25 over 15, which is really, in lowest terms, 5 over 3. Oh, but we need to check for extraneous. I need to make sure that if I plug it into here and here, I don't get a negative answer. Uh, 5 over 3 plus 1, positive. 2 times 5 over 3 minus 3, oh, positive. It works. What if it didn't work? What if I had no answers that worked? No solution. That's what I would write. No solve, no solution. So there's log equations. I already assigned number one and number two and number, oh, I think three. Four. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, G and H are nasty, but if you get those, you'll find the test easy, so I'll leave those. I skipped five. But yeah, I am. Woo, those are yucky. I already assigned six, yes? Seven? And eight. <laughs>